Member for Lindsay. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Well, I think we all enjoyed that puff of hot air that came from Member for Charlton, who seemed more intent on besmirching people rather than actually debating the points before us today. But before us today, we're actually talking about some really significant issues here about higher education reforms. Higher education reforms that will strengthen our university sector, that will create more opportunities for our, for our students and for our young Australians. Well, how many opportunities will that be? Well, that's 80,000 more students each year will be provided additional spaces, university spaces by 2018. That's 35,000 bachelor degrees, 48,000 diploma courses. These higher education reforms are about fairness and about opportunity. Let us not forget, no student will need to pay one dollar up front. Fee help will remain. The Commonwealth taxpayer will continue to meet 50 per cent of the cost. The government is proud of these reforms, and they are reforms designed to save the university sector. And quite simply, in the words of the in the Financial Review today of Belinda Robertson, and I quote, the short answer is because existing funding model is not sustainable and a new approach is needed. If the government's package is opposed outright, the quality of, these, of the things that our great universities do so well, teaching research, could be jeopardised. It is simply not possible to maintain the standards that students expect or the international reputation that Australia's university system enjoys without full fee deregulation. In embracing the rare and privileged opportunity, they shape the key element of long-term structural reform. Crossbenchers can create education legacy to be proud of. Belinda Robertson, Deputy Speaker, Chief Executive of Universities Australia. In the words of the member for Kingston, an ideological frolic, I'm sure she refers to Belinda Robertson, the Chief Executive of University of Australia, as an ideological frolic. Well, sure, that's an interesting way to look at it. What I find most perplexing is that those opposite thinks that chancellor and vice chancellors of all our university sectors are irresponsible. It's all scare and no substance. In fact, the University of Western Sydney was the first university in New South Wales to grandfather their fees to provide certainty for students. That's really irresponsible, isn't it? How about John Delwa, vice chancellor of La Trobe, wrote on the 15th of this month, and I quote, La Trobe University has on Monday taken the first step to the possible brave new world of fee deregulation by offering students enrolling at La Trobe in 2015 guarantee that their fees will not increase by more than 10 per cent above the regulated stu student contribution for, the, for each year of their degree. I am confident universities will set prices responsibly. The alternative consigns the sector to a very difficult future. So I guess those opposite want to assign universities to a very, dis very um, abysmal future. This has been nothing more than a disgraceful scare campaign put forward by those opposite. How about we take somebody else? Vicky Thompson in The Australian. Don't be fooled by a $100,000 degree. And I, I repeat, there is nothing to fear from deregulated fees or under inadequate degrees. Those opposites are just full of it. <laughs> Let us not forget it was the previous government that cut some $6.6 .6 billion out of the higher education sector. These higher education reforms introduced by the Minister for Education are all about providing opportunity. Opportunity for more Australians to access higher education. Opportunity for our local universities to excel and become some of the best institutions in the world in, uh, and in the Asia Pacific. On budget night, the Treasurer said, and I quote, Fellow Australians, we should have at least one university in the top 20 in the world, but we do not. And we should have more in the top 100. I think it's time we had universities that were globally competitive. Those opposite just want to stand in the way of our future of our universities. I asked the Leader of the Opposition, what is so wrong with wanting to see our universities excel on, on the international stage? Deputy Speaker, let us not forget our universities will be offering more scholarship and the extension of fee help across a broader spectrum of higher education providers. This government is committed to unlocking educational opportunities for even greater numbers of Australians. 
Nowhere is it more critical than in regions like Western Sydney, where additional training and educational opportunities, these reforms will create and drive the transformation of the region's labour market Order. and our Honourable economy. Member's time has